G'day and welcome to my tutorial on Google Earth and in particular how to use Google Earth to explore the landforms and landscapes of Antarctica. So you've probably seen this page in your textbook. This has some basic um, activities for you to complete. Some of them are more complex than others and um, yeah, they, they basically cover most of the basic features of Google Earth. There were a few other pointers um, elsewhere in your booklet that told you to um, look up Google Earth and explore this or explore that. So hopefully this tutorial video will help you with those as well. So when you up, open up Google Earth Pro, and Google Earth Pro is the one that we have at our school, it looks something like this, and you can left click and move your mouse and basically travel around the Earth and see all the different countries there. If you get disoriented, upside down or, or whatnot. If you go over here and click the N, that's going to arrange north to be um, up the top again as you would normally expect. So the first thing that we should do for our basic features is turn on some toolbars. So if we go view, I want to turn on my scale legend. Just check that box and what that means is when you zoom in a little bit here you'll get a, a linear scale which basically says this distance on your map is 1,585 kilometers, and as you zoom in, that scale changes accordingly. Another thing we need to turn on is our grid. So this is our latitude and longitude. So you can see now the equator here at zero degrees latitude, and as we go north, north 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and south 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, all the way down to Antarctica where we can see the Arctic Circle here and 65, 70, 75, 80, 85 degrees and right on the South Pole there should be 90 degrees and similarly in the Northern Hemisphere we get the Arctic Circle and going up the, towards the North Pole there. I may as well tell you now as well here in the bottom right of your screen you also have the exact coordinates um, how far north or south or east and west you are so your latitude and your longitude so East and west is, is these vertical lines, and north and south is the um, horizontal lines. Um, some other basic features, we can zoom in using the wheel on your mouse or using the plus and minus here, and you can move left or right using these or just by clicking and dragging. And you can zoom right into some of these um, features. Some of them will be more clear than others based on the quality of the, the satellite image that was taken. Another really good thing you can do is you can tilt the view of what you're looking at and this can help you get a really good um, three-dimensional view of the landscape. If you're, if you're zoomed right in there, and I'll just tilt um, my view over to here, you can start to really get a good idea of how steep some of the features of the landscape are and you can see some mountains forming there in a bit of a 3D view. You can see glaciers flowing down here, etc. Another really good thing you can do, if you, if you hold the control button on your keyboard and you, you um, move the wheel of your mouse, that's going to change um, the direction that you're looking at as well. So there's many different ways to manipulate the view to see some of these landforms and landscapes. So one of the first things we want you to do is to go to different parts of Antarctica, inland, on the coast, etc. And just have a look at some of those landforms. Can you identify some mountains, some ice sheets, some pack ice? some um, glaciers etc and write down what you can see and where they are. Um, another really good thing you can do from this layers toolbar here is turn on the photos layer. Now when that's pressed what that means is all of a sudden these little photo icons start appearing. Now what those are if you click on them you'll see photos that people have taken and sometimes they have a description of the landform or the landscape that's there and these are all what's called geotagged. So what that means is um, these photos were taken exactly at these points. Um, a lot of cameras and phones these days have GPS attached and you can um, geotag and upload the photos using that GPS to exactly where the photo was taken. So explore different parts of Antarctica including some of the coastlines and see some of the different photos taken around Antarctica. Okay, um, and another thing we can do is we can search for different um, specific parts of Antarctica. So some of the scientific bases from the different countries. So if we look at one of ours, <coughs> Mawson Station in Antarctica, and I click search, it's going to take us to exactly where Mawson Station is. 
And the activity asks you to describe, you can see here, the um, scientific bases, to describe the location of that base. Maybe think about why they chose to build it here and not further inland. Um, look at the, the land cover, look at the elevation, um, look at the any of the features of the landscape. <clears throat> And you can do that for any sort of or any of the places of Antarctica that we've studied. Um, another thing you can do while you're doing looking at places is, is you can add place marks. So up here in the top, you've got in your toolbar, you have something called place marks. And I can call this, let's say I just found a large mountain. I can click and drag that to exactly where the mountain was that I found and leave it there and press. Okay, I can add a description for the landscape, a very large mountain, click OK, and that's all of a sudden this mountain um, place mark here has been added to my places. Now if I add another um, place mark here, I could say um, ice sheet, um, very flat landscape, I'm just making this up, I don't know if this actually exists here, but I could say here there's a bit of an ice sheet there, and I can press um, OK, and that saves here. Um, to my sheet as well, to my places. So all of a sudden you end up, you can end up with a big collection of different features of Antarctica that you've managed to identify. You could put in the location of where a glacier starts and where a glacier ends, for example. A really good thing you can do to analyze the landscape is using this ruler tool up here. So here we can do a line, which means we can measure the distance between two points. So that was um, 550 kilometers. You could, for example, measure the distance between your two points that you've identified there. Or you could measure the um, entire distance across Antarctica from one side to the other. So I could go from from here to here and see that that's four and a half thousand kilometers. And you could compare that maybe to the width of Australia and try and get a bit of a scale um, comparison of the scale of, of the size. Another thing you can do is the path. So your path means basically you can click one um, line and then you can keep clicking and you can get a whole um, distance of a whole path. So if you were doing a walk around Antarctica, for example, you could get the distance all the way around. Another one that um, is a feature of Google Earth Pro is Polygon. Now Polygon measures the area of things. So let's say I wanted to measure the area um, that's just here. I could keep clicking and get a bit of a circular shape here and I can get the distance of the perimeter and also the area. So I think the activities say to measure, for example, the size of pack ice, you could try and find the biggest piece of ice floating that you could find um, and you could trace your way around it and you could um, calculate the area of that ice and try to get an idea of how big it is. And maybe you'd want to compare that maybe to the size of Melbourne or the size of your suburb and try and get an idea of, of scale. Another thing that we were going to look at is um, elevation. So whenever you move your mouse anywhere on Google Earth, there's a little elevation thing here that says how high you are above um, mean sea level. So around the coast should be about uh, zero. So here you can see about 14.8, so really low. As we move inwards towards mountains, you can see that that's up to 2,000 meters, and you should be able to find some areas that are 3,000 meters um, plus. And so, and you can measure the elevation of the South Pole. So you should be able to get an idea of how mountainous and how high the elevation of Antarctica is. And that would be measured based on the height of the ice, not based on the height of the actual um, rock or, or soil underneath. Now in Australia, you might want to compare the elevation um, of Australia and see that it's a lot um, lower. You might try to find the highest point you can in Australia, or maybe compare this to um, Mount Everest or the Himalayas or um, maybe the um, Swiss Alps or somewhere in New Zealand and you can compare the elevation of those areas. Another really good thing you can do with elevation is you can draw a longitudinal profile. So if I go here to add paths, let's go, let's add a path from coast to the South Pole and I'm going to add a path um, from anywhere on the coast, let's choose here, all the way to the South Pole. Now to make it easier to see, I'm just going to change the, the style and the color. So let's make the line um, bright green and let's make the width a little bit wider. And all of a sudden I can see my path here and the path has been saved here to my places. Now I can right click on that and I can say show elevation profile. All of a sudden, 
I've got a profile here that shows how much the elevation varies as I go along from the coast to the um, South Pole there. So you can try and look at the steepest um, part there. Where is the highest elevation? Is it at the South Pole or is it um, somewhere further inland? And you can see the arrow um, moving along the line as I move my cursor along here. So that can be yeah, a really good way of comparing. Maybe you could do another profile. I could add another path from um, a different part of the coast to the South Pole and I can compare that one and I can see which one actually was steeper. Was it this way or this way? Or you could measure a path across the entire um, width of Antarctica. So you can get a really good idea of, of the steepness and you can imagine um, the explorers going from the coast trying to find the South Pole and the sorts of landscape and the steepness that they would have come across um, when doing that. So I'll just close all of that. A few other things that you can have a play around with up here. Um, a lot of these won't be that useful to you. You probably wouldn't want to add a polygon. You don't need to add an image overlay or record a tour. But um, this one might be useful. This one is historical imagery. So what you can do is you can change the year of the actual image that you're looking at. Um, so you could you might be able to have a look at we were at Mawson Station before. You could go back to um, 1999, for example, and have a look at Mawson Station and have a look at it in 2016 and, and see have they added any buildings there, for example. Or you might want to have a look at the um, the ice around Antarctica and you might want to change the, the year and see, okay, well, has the actual um, ice melted at all and has the actual um, the size of Antarctica changed because of that? You may not find much difference, but um, it's worth playing around with. If you can't find anything that's changed much in Antarctica, maybe go to a suburb of Melbourne that you know a lot of developments happened in and you might want to change the year of that and see how it's changed. Another really good thing you can do is change the um, the timing and have a look at whether the, um, the land was under light or darkness. Now we know with Antarctica that in the summertime it's light 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And in the middle of winter, so August, for example, it's under darkness for um, 24 hours a day. So you might, by playing around with this, you can see um, whether it's light or darkness at different times of the year. Um, this one here is, you can change it to Google Earth Mars if you want to see what um, Mars looks like. It's not related at all to Antarctica, obviously, but it's a bit of fun to muck around with. And I'll just go back to Earth. Um, you can also play around with some of the layers here to explore different parts of Antarctica. You might want to turn on, um, there's probably no roads or, or 3D buildings to play around with, but maybe some of the weather data or maybe some of the photo galleries. Um, you might be able to see some, some different data there. So play around with that. And if you've got a bit of time or you want to muck around at home, if you can't see anything useful for Antarctica, try some of these things at other places around the world and you might see some um, interesting features. Good luck and enjoy!